Greetings. Today I would like to discuss how to create a complete end-to-end -end application uh, using HCL's Volt MX Iris uh, and uh, HCL's Volt MX Foundry uh, to interact with a relational database um, and incorporate some data objects there within the Foundry construct. So to begin with, uh, I'm going to just show you what I've defined here for my MySQL database. So I'll log into that just to show you what I have there. So I'll show you the databases. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the users database. Show you the tables there, just the user info table. I'll describe that for you so that you can see the uh, um, five columns that I've defined, name, email, password, phone number, and country. Um, I'll do a select on that so you can see what I have in the database already. Uh, there's four users there uh, with emails, passwords, phone numbers, and country. So I want to go ahead and, and be able to display this information uh, readably to a user on an end device. So the first thing I want to do is, is I want to go ahead and I want to uh, create a new project in Voltimex uh, Iris. I'm going to choose a, a native app there. I'll call it my native N-A-T-I-V-E app. Um, look at the advanced project settings just to make sure by the default you're on the reference architecture, which is uh, what, what we recommend uh, when using Voltimex Iris. If there's a need to use freeform JavaScript for the application, uh, there's the ability to do that, but this is the default and, and the recommended way to use uh, the product. So I'll go ahead and click Create there. Um, while this is being created, uh, Voltimex Iris is, is basically making you a workspace and uh, all of the, the needed files uh, that you'll need to interact. It begins um, with the storyboard view. Uh, as we see here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and select to go into the design since I already have a design in mind. By default, uh, the mobile is uh, populated with its first form there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the responsive web since we're using a, a screen sharing session here to, to let you see kind of what's happening on the, on, the, on the web itself or that responsive application rather than, than using a device. Uh, so I'll go ahead and go into responsive web, select forms, and, and select a new form there. When you begin with an application, uh, you want to make sure that you uh, build everything on a flex container so it's not flat on the form, but it's all contained inside of a container. So I'm going to fit that to parent so it covers the entire form itself. Uh, I like to always make sure that my uh, added widgets have names that make sense to me. Uh, so I'll go ahead and I'll prefix that flex container with FLX, my native app container just so I understand what I have there, and I misspelled my. You'll see when I hit enter on that, and I uh, rename that over here on the right-hand side with that ID, that it also renames the, the randomly generated uh, name on the left as well. So I know I want to get that data from uh, the back end, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that with an action. So I'm going to throw a button here on the container, and again, I will rename that button. Uh, to get data and then I will also here put some text on it that says populate users. So now it makes a little bit more sense to me and I understand what everything is going on with my widgets. When I retrieve that data I know I'm going to get a large number of um, individual records returned to me. Uh, so I want to I want to capture these in a segment, um, a segment widget. So I'm going to add that segment to the uh, flex container. I'm also going to fit that to parent. Um, now when I do that, it's going to cover up my button. So I want to make sure that I take this down from the top. So over here on the properties, uh, I'm going to make sure I'm 150 dp down from the top. 
I'm going to rename that segment to seg uh, data from DB, just so I understand what I'm working with at all times. And, uh, and then we see that we have a bunch of individual empty rows here. So let's go ahead and build that segment row template. So we want to go over it and click on templates in the left. And uh, in our desktop, since that's the type of application that we're using right now, I'll go to the segments section. And I want to copy this sample row template. So I'll duplicate that uh, to, to make my own. Again, this has a randomly generated name to it. So I'll call this um, my row of row, uh, my native app. And we can see that that changes over here as well. Inside of there is a flex container that everything is built on. So I also want to make sure I have that um, set up to a, a usable name. So my native app uh, row, I'll call it, from the flex container. Inside of here, I have a couple of different uh, widgets, a um, couple labels. This is the heading the description, the time, and a little strip that denotes the difference between the different records. So all I want to be able to display with my users is the name and the phone number. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete the heading there, and I'm going to rename description label um, to something that's appropriate, which is label name. And uh, I'm going to put the placeholder text as name as well. Uh, same thing with time. I'm going to change that from label time to label phone, um, as well as do the same thing with the placeholder there. I'll go ahead and save that template and uh, and and close that uh, that particular tab. So when I come back to the form, um, if I select my my segment here again. I can go over to the segment tab here within the properties and I want to make sure that I use that row template. So in the row template here, I'll go ahead and I will select the one that I just created in my user templates. And so if I select that, we see that all of this is populated here. Now when this is rendered the first time, even without data, this will show empty data with, this, uh, with these placeholders in place, which is not visually appealing. So I want to go ahead into the master data that's defined for the segment and I'm just going to go ahead and clear that out so it doesn't look extraneous uh, when the user is using it. Now uh, I want to go ahead and make sure that I connect to uh, my Foundry uh, server itself. So I go to data and services in the top here and um, project services. And then I configure new uh, because I'm going to make a new service to access uh, the, the data. And I'm going to access a relational database. So that's what I select here. And this communicates with Foundry and, um, and starts to build that application uh, on the Foundry server. So here I'll call it my native app service. It's a relational database for authenticated users. This is the first version. Uh, the database is a MySQL database. Um, I'll go ahead and, and grab the address to that, um, which is defined as local host on my machine because I'm running a local Foundry server. This would be the, uh, the, the address of your uh, remote database if you had that, and then this is the actual database that you're hitting. So I'll note my user as root, which is the root user. And, uh, and the password for that. I'll select test connection to make sure I get there and the connection was successful. So I'll go ahead and save and generate that. Let me call this my native app service today. <laughs> I'll go ahead and save and generate that. And uh, we'll make sure that we are using the user's database, uh, the tables, of user info, which is what we'd already went through in the beginning there, and I'll click next. Uh, and this is going to go ahead and generate those objects for us. So we can see here in the data model for the object um, that uh, inside the user info, we have these particular fields that we knew that we saw from the database initially. 
Um, so we want to go ahead and uh, select the mapping there. And um, inside the mapping, we want to do a get to be able to populate those. So uh, simply, that's all that we've really selected. We can go ahead and test this. Uh, so we'll go ahead and send that request. And we see that we get this information back into our objects uh, that we have defined here. So we'll go ahead and save that. And, uh, and, and we're done with this interaction with Foundry. Now what we need to do is we need to make our application aware of this. So populate users is uh, the button that we've decided to use to, to make the action to connect to the Foundry server and populate that. So when we select populate users, uh, we want to go ahead and go to the properties and the action tab. And on click, we want to do some things with that. So we'll go ahead and click edit there. Um, we're going to use uh, the network section um, in the action editor here and we want to invoke the service. So we're going to invoke a service there, and we're going to invoke that service that we just created. And once we invoke that service on the callback from that service, we want to take that data and we want to map it to our form. So we're going to go ahead and add a mapping once we do a callback there. So the service that we're going to invoke when we select service here uh, is the uh, user info service. We're going to go ahead and select the method of get there, which uh, we want to get that data from there. And then we're kind of done at this point in time. If you want to, you can check on the design view as well as the code that was generated from that. Um, but really for low code, that's all that you need to do. You can go ahead and uh, move on to the mapping. So in the mapping, we want to go ahead and make sure that we uh, get the data from the services uh, and put it over into our form. So we'll select the services here. These are the records that are coming back um, from, the, from the database and from Foundry. Uh, in that object service that we've created. Uh, these are the records, country, password, name, phone number, and email. On the form, we want to go ahead into form one, into that segment, and into that master data map. Um, and then we have uh, the, the data row collection here. So we want to go ahead and match the collection to the collection. So I'm going to select the records collection, and then I'm going to select the data row collection. And we see a little arrow drawn there to show us that this is a mapping that we've created. So then we have label name and label uh, phone. Inside here we have the properties of that, which is the text that we want to uh, update with the phone and the label. So I'm going to select na the name string here, and then the text for the name. I'm going to map that, and I'm also going to map the phone number here to the phone number of the text there. Go ahead and save that, and that kind of uh, finalizes our action that we have there from the button. So that pretty much should complete us. I'll go ahead and build this to run a live preview here. And so while this is being built, we are actually publishing this to Foundry. Um, so it's actually being brought out onto our, our Foundry server, whether that's the local one or, or your cloud instance, and publishing that on Foundry and kind of aggregating that to what's happening with, with the Iris application. So uh, Iris applications um, have become very useful. So we can either do that with the, as we are doing here with the responsive web, or, or we can publish this uh, to mobile devices or tablets. Um, so if you do a mobile device or a tablet, you can preview that as well, or also packages up as a deliverable for those devices. Um, as we've done here, we can just see that our, our uh, preview has popped up for our responsive web. So if we select populate users, we will see if our action completes, which it does. It goes out to Foundry, retrieves that data, and puts uh, the name and the phone number in our segment data, and, uh, and we have completed our application. Hope this was helpful for you. Thank you very much.